strategy that will win over the genotypic sex determination strategies. And the basic condition is if you have um, somehow these organisms living in, in environmental patches, that some confer a higher fitness to males and some others are beneficial for females, as uh, this case here, then uh, say for instance that temperature induces higher growth rates and that females uh, gain more in fitness by being, uh, having larger body size because their fecundity increases more than it may do for males in this instance in case of species where males reproduce no matter what size they are. Or it could be instead, um, how do I get rid of? It could be instead that we have, oops. I'm terrible with these things. Can you get rid of that little thing? We'll just. There you go. So say, for instance, that instead of being a, a, a geographic patches, we may have, a, we may have a, that females during the a, a year, for instance, um, females may be produced early in the year and have longer growing season, so they will attain larger body size than females that may be produced at warmer temperatures during the summer that attain a smaller body size. So um, female, it will be convenient under this uh, type of scenarios to have a TSD because the embryos will develop into the sex that attains maximum fitness in any given patch, be that spatial or temporal. And that strategy wins over GSD where a female that may be wasting half of her reproductive output by laying say 100 eggs that are 50-50 males and females and in a patch that is better for females so will produce 50% of suboptimal offspring. Now, um, that, that and then there, under uh, this scenario, you may see that TSD may be adapted, but still there's a problem of producing bias sex ratios in years that are extremely warm or extremely cold, particularly for species that are shorter, uh, shorter lived. So you may expect that the, the TSD species or lineages being vulnerable to changes in weather or changes in climate may lead to higher extinction and have a overall lower diversification rates. Whereas GSD's uh, lineages that have sex chromosomes, because sex chromosomes tend to carry or are uh, often carry um, factors that induce reproductive barriers, those should induce higher speciation rates and therefore higher um, diversification. But the, the um, um, evidence for any of these models is actually conflicting. So we took a look at uh, this question um, as part of uh, the working group of the Tree of Sex uh, um, working group, and we asked with these colleagues in the University of Tel Aviv whether sex determination might affect diversification and whether some life history traits, such as longevity, might affect the effects that we observe. So the prevalence of TSD and GSD varies between uh, uh, lineages. We explored these for turtles and lizards or the combined lizards and snakes or squamates. And you can see that the prevalence of TSD in red is higher in turtles, whereas GSD is more common in uh, lizards or in squamates. In all of these cases, TSD is reconstructed as the ancestral state from which GSD evolved either um, multiple times and in these lineages there are reversals as well. So we ask, I don't have time to get into the method, method details, but um, the results basically tell us the following. There's no effect uh, that we could find of sex determination on speciation or extinction rates for either of these, uh, neither of these two groups. However, we did find that the transitions from uh, TSD to GSD are greater in uh, lizards, and the results are the same for squamates. Um, are, is these transitions from TSD to GSD are greater in lizards that are the transitions from GSD to TSD, whereas in turtles, the transitions one way or the other are the same in both directions. So this tells us that turtles retain TSD, uh, the ancestral state, whereas the lizards give up t uh, TSD more often. And this seems to be related to longevity, because if we look at lineages of vertebrates that have a 
TSD are there exclusively or mostly TSD like turtles, crocodilians, and tuatara. They are much longer lived than are uh, lizards or snakes. And if you think about it, the worst case scenario, you have a TSD species that say is annual. And in a, if the season happens to be too cold or too warm and you only produce males or females, you can have the extinction of a population in a single generation, right? So it you would expect that longevity should um, increase the, the probability of retention of the trait because a long-lived species can withstand um, several seasons or several years of producing only one sex of the other because by the time they mature, being long-lived, there will still be um, individuals of the opposite sex in the, in the population or individuals that ha were born after that will um, be brought to the, the population so they could reproduce. We looked into each of these lineages, the turtles and the lizards, and, and there is indeed within them a tendency for TSD lineages to evolve towards a greater long uh, lifespan than the GSD lineages in turtles, in lizards, and, and the squamates. Now, this is something that then, uh, when we were exploring what happens uh, in transitions of uh, sex determination in relation to um, uh, diversification. Something else that we observed years ago um, that, uh, that is, um, it is the, an effect that happens or something that happens associated with the transitions in sex determination is uh, related to genomic uh, reshuffling. So here we, I have the prune tree of turtles indicating TSD and GSD in green and, and black and the chromosome number that ranges from 26 to 68 in turtles in this bar here, color-coded. And in the re um, red branches, I have the lineages where there's a transition in sex determination, which in turtles is mostly TSD to GSD, so the acquisition of sex chromosomes. And it happens that in those red branches where there's a change in sex determination, there's a 20-fold higher rate of evolution of chromosome number. So somehow, when there's a transition in sex determination, the genomes are reshuffling, chromosomes are fusing or breaking apart to increase or decrease the chromosome number of the species. We don't know why, and we're investigating that, as well as how this may be uh, occurring through a, a, a project that we are about to, in the last stages of, Something that we observe also is that, interestingly, these red branches um, split at times during the, the, these 210 million years where the Earth temperature, the global temperature, was reaching close to peaks of, uh, of global temperature. So perhaps there's an induction, perhaps the populations get, say, female bias, since turtles produce mostly females at the high temperatures, and some of these species react adaptively. The, the adaptation that they have is to transition into GSD. If that happens uh, via a change of some mechanism that is already involved in sex determination and makes the genomes unstable, so they are, the chromosomes are more prone to breaking apart or to fusing, that could be causing the changes in chromosome number. Or it could be the opposite, that something, uh, perhaps temperature itself, may um, activate transposable elements that make the uh, genomes, the chromosomes unstable and cause the changes in chromosome number. And if those changes are, are altering the synteny of genes involving sex determination, that could be breaking synteny groups uh, or bringing together genes that were apart and now are regulated in a different manner and trigger the change in sex determination. So what we are doing to explore this is we are studying uh, 14 species of turtles that span all chromosome numbers and all transitions in sex determination, and we're trying to establish the evolution of those genomes, of those karyotypes. So here are the karyotypes of these species. Some have uh, TSD, some have XY chromosomes, some have ZW chromosomes. And what we are doing is we flow sorted uh, chromosomes from species that have a low, a high, and an average value of chromosomes to uh, produce uh, chromosome-specific paints. And then we painted those across all these taxa to try to establish homology between these, among all of these chromosomes, and then be able to reconstruct the ancestral turtle karyotype and infer the changes in chromosome um, rearrangements that gave uh, rise to these <coughs> different karyotypes. So here are some of the uh, results that we have. 
Say, for instance, this paint uh, coated here in, in black paints across all of these turtles, the chromosome one of all of them, so that tells us that the, those chromosomes are homologous. This one in red, for instance, paints down a lot of these chromosomes, but in this one in glyptomies, you have a little portion that paints chromosome 12. So that's telling us that there has been a chromosomal rearrangement. So anytime you see blocks of different colors, that means that there has been a chromosomal rearrangement. Um, notice here, this species that has a low number of chromosomes has the large macrochromosomes contains blocks of several paints that go to other chromosomes in other turtles. So there has been a fusions or rearrangements that um, form the largest of these and they ac that account for part of the decrease in chromosome number in that lineage. We have evidence that, that's, um, that that happened also by looking at satellite DNA from the telomeres, which are these repetitive uh, sequences that are found uh, that cap the chromosomes, protect the chromosomes from erosion during cell division. And we find when we paint with uh, probes for that satellite DNA, we find them in the tips of chromosomes, as you would expect of all of those species that I showed you earlier. But in these four, for instance, we have examples where that uh, telomere DNA is found in the middle of chromosomes, indicated here by the, by the arrows. Sometimes the blocks are large like that one there and, and here. So those are um, <coughs> potentially the ghosts, the scars from fusion events of chromosomes, where two chromosomes came together and what were the tips are now in the middle of the new uh, fused chromosome. And some, uh, often those the species may get rid of those inter interstitial uh, uh, satellite DNA, but sometimes they retain them and may even expand them. Or perhaps some of these are the younger events of fusions that occur and they haven't lost them yet, uh, we, don't, we don't know. But, it may, but they do coincide with changes in chromosome numbers that occur in those four lineages. So it accounts in part for the change in chromosome number that we observed. So the next um, step is to, once we find the breakpoints in this chromosome fusion or fissions, to look at the genes around those areas, if, uh, looking for genes that are involved in the sex de development, in the gonadal development. We know what those genes are. We now have a full composition of this network from transcriptomic uh, analysis that we have done in the lab, and I'll uh, talk about this more in detail uh, tomorrow. But the point is that we have explored the profiles of all genes that are active during the gonadal development of these turtles are different stages of development. And now we can look to um, uh, ask the question as to whether those are around the breakpoints of these chromosomal fusions are, and fissions that we determine from the chromosome paint work. Um, we can do that also by painting back clones that contain chunks of DNA. We have a battery uh, library accessible and we have used these um, in some instances for other uh, work that we did to study sex chromosome evolution in, in turtles. This is one of the species that we studied, Glyptemis in Sculpta. Um, this year we um, um, published the um, XY chromosome system that we discovered in that, that we did with, through chromosome uh, comparative genome hybridization. But we also use back clones that gives us higher resolution to identify inversions, for example. And in this case, we, by doing that, you see that the, these three back clones change relative position between the X and the Y and, uh, and help us identify inversions that occur between the X and the Y of, uh, of this turtle and also between the sex chromosomes of glyptomies and the painted turtle chromosome four, which is homologous to the sex chromosomes of the other one. So we are using this technique also to try to figure out the location of genes that from the back clones contain genes involving sex uh, determination. Something else that we uh, found by looking comparative genomics, there's um, the, the, of the turtles that have GSD mechanism, there's only 10 or so, 10 that have sex chromosomes characterized cytogenetically. And uh, of those, we have some genomic information about the content of the sex chromosomes. It's still incipient, but it allows us to determine the homology of these sex chromosomes to the chromosomes of other organisms. So we know for, for the ones that we have um, genomic information, we know that several turtle species evolve sex chromosomes independently in these different lineages, and they co-opted different autosomes for the role as sex chromosomes. 
So the, there's these two species from two different uh, lineages that co-opted the same chromosome that is homologous to that chromosome four of painted turtle. There's the soft shells that uh, co-opted a chromosome that is homologous to chicken 15, and another one that co-opted a, a chromosome that is a, a homologous to chicken uh, Z. And interestingly, when we look at the content of these chromosomes, we find that even though they derive from different turtle autosomes, they actually do share a deep homology to what seems to be a protosex chromosome in, in vertebrates. So all, all of these uh, uh, chromosome systems map as well as some of other vertebrates to chromosome one of Cenopus tropicalis. And that chromosome contains blocks that have contributed not only to these turtle chromosomes, but also to sex chromosomes like this block here, contributed to the Z of a gecko and a chicken and then this turtle. This um, other one uh, here contributed to the X, part of the X of human and the uh, uh, ZWC chromosome of another lizard, this block to the X of uh, Anolis and the Z of the soft shells. And then we have these other turtles that seem to um, show homology to a different uh, chromosome in, um, in Xenopus. Interestingly, in turtles, all of the sex chromosome systems for which we have genomic in, uh, content information involves an inversion. And inversions are important for the evolution of sex chromosomes um, as what we heard earlier today. Now, in two of these cases, the um, inversions involve important genes in sex determination in vertebrates, like DMRT1, and in this case, WT1. So it seems that these uh, chromosomes, although they came from different autosomes in turtles, may come from actually an ancestral protosex chromosomes, and even perhaps that these two blocks, the one of Xenopus tropicalis and the five, may even have been part of a single block in an ancestral species. And something about the content of that uh, chromosome seems to make it good at sex, at having a role at sex chromosomes. We don't know yet exactly what that is. There's the content of certain genes, but is different parts that gave rise to different chromosomes, but there's something that we still are trying to explore. <clears throat> and with that, um, I'll be happy to answer questions if there's time. Thank you.